almost 4.30, and Craig is getting our technicalities organized, and then we will begin. Before we begin, uh, before we begin, and just, I think we've got an international uh, meeting tonight. Dale's in, in PEI, I'm in Vancouver. So we've got both coasts oh. covered. <laughs> there you go. From sea to sea. <laughs> nice. You, Terry. Buzz here. I will call this meeting to order, and before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge the importance of our First Nation community partners. We value their cultures, their histories and their relation, our relationships with all First Nations people. And we'd like to thank our community partners, Diana Shinabe. So I'll call the meeting to order and ask for approval of the agenda with an addendum that you would have received. It's correspondence related to item 5B, the Ferncliff um, part of the public meeting. So with that, could I have of the agenda. No hands, all in favor? <laughs> Where's everybody? <laughs> Thank you. Um, and is there any disclosure of pecuniary interest or general nature thereof? None, we will move on. So I have a motion that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Seguin does hereby adopt the minutes of the regular meeting of Council held September 20th, 2021 as related. I have a motion from Councillor Moffat. I so move that motion, Mayor. I'm seconded by Councillor Cole. I will second that motion. All in favor. I have a motion that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Seguin does hereby adjourn the regular meeting to hold a public meeting for the following matters. Zoning bylaw amendment application number R 2021-0009-H for Mayor and Penny and zoning bylaw amendment application number R 2021-0010-H and consent application number B 2021 0015-H for Ferncliff. I have a motion from Councillor Fellner. Could you move this? Recording in progress. Um, Councillor Osborne, could you make this motion? So moved. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Collins, could you second this? I'll second the motion, Mayor. Thank you. All in favor of moving into the public meeting. Council will now hold, a, hold public meetings for consent and zoning bylaw amendment applications. In accordance with the Planning Act, Council will consider all matters placed before it prior to granting a consent or passing a zoning bylaw. If a person or public body files an appeal of a decision of the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Seguin in respect of a proposed consent, does not make written commit submissions to the Council before it provides or refuses to provide a provisional consent, the Ontario Land Tribunal may dismiss the appeal. Anyone wishing to receive notice of the passing of a zoning bylaw amendment, not owning land within 120 meters of the area to which it applies, and who has not submitted such a request in writing, should provide their full name and address to the clerk. A person or public body does not make oral submissions at a public meeting, or make written submissions to the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Seguin, a person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of Council to the Ontario Land Tribunal, and the person or public body may not be added as a party to the hearing of an appeal before the Ontario Land Tribunal unless, in the opinion of the Tribunal, 
there are reasonable grounds to do so. Purpose of Zoning Bylaw Amendment Application Number R-2021-0009-H for Mayor and Penny is to rezone the subject land to permit an increase in lot coverage within 60 meters of the high water mark. Lot coverage within 60 meters of the high water mark is proposed to be 12%, where a maximum of 7.5% is permitted. The effect of this application is to permit a boathouse that is 94 square meters or 1,008 1, square feet, which is to be located on an I now ask the clerk to state the method by which notice of the meeting was provided and the dates on which that notice was provided. Notice of the public meeting was provided by posting the property and by regular mail on August 18, 2021. Notice was therefore considered to be provided in accordance with the requirements of the plan. Has anyone registered to speak in favor of or in opposition to this? I and Allen of Planscape, agent for the applicant, has registered to speak to this applicant. Uh, and has the township received? No correspondence has been received. Okay, I would ask Mr. Allen of Planscape to identify yourself and speak. Good evening. My name is Ryan Allen. I'm sorry there was a bit of a cutout in my feed. I wasn't sure if I was um, ready to go or not. Uh, my name is uh, Ryan Allen. I'm a registered professional planning consultant with Planscape in Bracebridge 104 Kimberly Ave, P1L1Z8. I'm here today representing the applicants, uh, Janice Penny and Jans Mayer. They have a uh, property at 73 Morgan Bay Road on Lake Rosso. I have a presentation that I would like to share. Uh, could I share my screen if committee would indulge me? Go ahead. Thank you. As I mentioned, the um, subject property is at 73 Morgan Bay Road on Lake Rosso. This is the approximate location of the property. Um, it's partly on Sucker Bay, the mouth of Sucker Bay, and the larger part of Morgan Bay. Uh, the applicant proposes to construct a 1,000, uh, approximately 1,000 square foot, one story, one slip boathouse above an existing dock. The amendment, as mentioned, proposes to permit a maximum lot coverage within 60 meters of the high water mark of 12%, whereas a maximum 7.5 meters is permitted. The boathouse will comply with all other requirements of the zoning bylaw, that is length, height, width, and setbacks. This is a rendering of the side and the front of the proposed boathouse and the existing dock. This is a site plan that shows the existing cottage and deck, as well as the existing dock and proposed boathouse. The lot itself has just a little over 61 meters of frontage and 0.75 hectares of lot area. There was a previous dock that was removed as well as an existing sleeping cabin that was right at the water's edge. Those were removed in approximately 2019. The dock was replaced with a larger dock with one slip that's carved out and the sleeping cabin was removed and will not be reconstructed. Uh, you'll be very familiar with the planning framework that applies to the waterfront area or the shoreline area of your official plan. Specifically, there's policies that intend to protect and preserve the water quality and the visual aesthetic character of the waterfront to ensure natural shoreline landscapes dominate over built form and human-made features, to protect uh, wetlands and fish habitat, and to ensure development of waterfront properties protects the environment and does not result in negative impacts. Development in the shoreline in particular shall be sensitive to the preservation of tree and vegetation cover. The zoning bylaw will eliminate the visual impact of boathouses on adjacent lands uh, to ensure the natural quality of the shoreline dominates. The width, height, setback, standards of shoreline structures, which include boathouses, are to be implemented through the zoning bylaw. Had a chance to visit the property and have some photos. This is the rear of the existing dwelling taken from the parking area. Uh, there's a deck in front of the dwelling. The dwelling is very elevated on top of a high point of land that has an exceptional view over Morgan Bay and Lake Rosso. 
Um, and because of its high elevation and uh, far setback from the shoreline, it's over um, 50 meters setback from the shoreline. Um, it's a substantial um, a set of stairs that lead down towards the shoreline. I understand there's more than 140 steps. And as you can see, the shoreline is, uh, has been maintained in a very natural, well-treated, well-forested state. Um, and if we turn to the, um, to the left or to the rear, there's a, a sizable rock outcrop that exists. Uh, this is the existing dock that was uh, reconstructed or constructed in 2019 to, that replaced the existing dock and the one slip that has been uh, cut out. The proposed uh, boathouse would cover the portion of this existing dock. Uh, this is the existing dock again. This is uh, looking, <clears throat> looking to the south towards uh, 83 Morgan Bay and 53 Morgan Bay, I believe. 81 Morgan Bay and 53 Morgan Bay. This is a view um, from Lake Rosso looking towards the subject property. You can see the dwelling. Um, there's an arrow pointing to it on the height of land. The future boathouse is uh, approximately to be located in that um, yellow square that's been highlighted over the existing dock. You can see the existing dock, uh, the neighboring lot at 81 Morgan Bay and the existing boathouse over at uh, 53 Morgan Bay Road. I would note that you know, there's a substantial amount of uh, natural shoreline uh, that contributes substantially to the appearance of natural form. Uh, and that the, while the boathouse will add built form along the shoreline, um, the balance of the, uh, the appearance will continue to be uh, natural uh, shoreline features. Um, boathouses are permitted on Lake Rosso. A maximum of one boathouse is permitted per lot. Um, substantial shoreline vegetation buffers exist uh, due to steep slopes and significant setbacks um, that from the dwelling from the shoreline, as I mentioned. The natural landscape will continue to dominate over the appearance of built form on the subject property and in the general area. The visual and aesthetic character of the waterfront will be preserved. And I think importantly, no tree removal is proposed. This uh, boathouse will be entirely located over an existing dock. And um, I just wanted to point out um, a, a bit of a um, uh, interesting uh, part of your zoning bylaw. Um, like most waterfront municipalities, lot coverage is measured two ways, over the entire lot and the area within 60 meters of the high water mark. And the lot coverage must comply with the maximum percentage in both of these areas. However, in the case of um, Seguin, um, where a part of a building or sun deck is located within 60 meters of the high water mark, the effect is the entire building area or sun deck is counted towards lot coverage within 60 meters of the high water mark. And the approach is, or the consequence is that um, more building area and sun deck area get picked up in lot coverage than uh, would normally otherwise be uh, caught in other municipal bylaws, for example. I think it's interesting to point out that if only the portion of the sun deck and the dwelling, so this is the, uh, the portion highlighted in orange for the dwelling and the portion highlighted in red for the deck, if only those portions were counted towards the lot area within 60 meters, the, um, the proposed boathouse actually would comply with the 7.5% coverage and it also complies with all other requirements of the bylaw and would be permitted. However, because the, uh, the way that the zoning bylaw is written, it picks up the entire area of the dwelling, even though there's large portions that are beyond 60 meters from the shoreline. And it also picks up some deck that is beyond 60 meters. And the consequence of that is that the lot coverage is 12% instead of 7.5%. Uh, I mentioned that the, uh, the boathouse complies with the, the maximum width. And in fact, it's actually less than the maximum width. 15.4 meters maximum, where the proposed is 8.9 or 9.8, excuse me. The maximum length is 11 meters, whereas the proposed length is 9.7. The maximum height is 5 meters. The proposed is 4.8. The maximum height to the top of the eaves or the bottom of the eaves is 3.6, and it's 2.8 for the proposed. So I think this demonstrates that the, uh, the proposed boathouse is smaller than could be constructed in accordance with the requirements of the bylaw. Uh, also importantly, the boathouse is centrally located on the lot um, and it exceeds the minimum setback from side lot lines. The boathouse is constructed over an existing dock 
no tree removal are, is required and the existing shoreline vegetative buffer, which is substantial, will be unchanged and no changes are required to the existing dock to support the proposed boathouse structure. Um, in conclusion, I believe um, it's my professional opinion that the um, amendment is consistent with the provincial policy statement, conforms with the township official plan and represents good planning. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions the committee or council may have. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have a question from Councillor Osborne. Uh, can you hear me, Mayor? Okay, I'm having trouble with audio coming in. But anyway, um, was there correspondence to be read before we were in council, or do you want to go ahead? No correspondence has been received. Okay. So my question is, um, Ryan, uh, to Ryan Allen, you refer to this as the dock, but you also refer to the deck. So. I take it from your comments that there'll be no additional dock or slash construction to dominate boathouse. Is that correct? Through you, Mayor, that question was breaking up slightly at the end, but I think there was a question of deck or dock. Um, the proposed boathouse is to be constructed over the existing dock. No changes are proposed to the existing dock. So there, therefore, does not cover. It answers that question, but the bow dust doesn't cover the entire in deck. Deck we left out. I Sorry. think if you look at the render, you are breaking out up, Councillor Osborne. But I believe if you look at the uh, rendering in the presentation, you will see that the boathouse covers a large portion of the existing dock, but some of the dock is not under the boathouse. Is that correct? Through you, um, Madam Mayor, that is correct. The, the width of the boathouse does not cover the entire width of the dock. There is a portion of dock that remains outside of the boathouse. Okay, which is actually under it. Uh, my second question, Mayor, is to Ryan is, uh, there's a note about storage. Uh, is what percentage of the boathouse will be used for storage or do you, do you have a percentage of space for storage and what type of storage? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, I do not have a percentage. I could, um, I could quickly pull up the, um, the dimensions of the boathouse and come up with an estimate for you. Um, I don't have pictures um, looking back onto the shoreline area behind the existing dock, unfortunately, but if I did, you would see um, a number of canoes, kayaks, and paddle boards, life jackets, and paddles that are being stored currently outdoors on racks. Um, the, these boats are subject to weathering, sun, and damage, and also there's a sizable um, uh, set of stairs that have to be carried up to um, the dwelling for storage. There's also no, um, there's no garage or storage building up at the top by the dwelling. So there is um, effectively a, a, a dry slip that is proposed beside the wet slip that would accommodate the boat. And that dry slip is intended to be used for storage of marine related equipment and boats uh, like the stand up paddle boards, the multiple kayaks and okay. the canoes. Uh Right, right. Okay, thank you. That's what I wanted to know. It's water-related storage. Yeah, thank you so, sorry much. if I, I could have gotten to the point a little quicker. That's that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any further questions from Council? Oh, thank you very much, Ryan, for coming and thank providing you. a presentation. Thank you. I will now uh, move on to consent application B. 2021-0015-H for Ferncliff, Ferncliff development is to permit a boundary adjustment. Granting lands will convey a parcel having an area of 0 0.64 hectares and frontage of 95 meters on Ross Moyne Road to the benefiting lands at 10 Bealey Point Road. Purpose of zoning bylaw amendment application number R-2021 dash 0010 H for Ferncliff development is to rezone a portion of the subject lands 
from the Shoreline Residential 1 Exception 79 SR1-79 zone to rural zone to facilitate a lot boundary adjustment and to ensure that the benefiting lands at 10 Bealey Point Road are not split zoned. I now ask the court to state the method by which the notice of the meeting was provided that notice was provided. Notice of the public meeting was provided by posting the property and by regular mail on August 26, 2021. This was therefore considered to be right in accordance with the requirements of the planning act. Is anyone registered to speak in favor of or in opposition to these applications? No one has registered to speak to these applications. Uh, has Township received any correspondence with respect to these applications? Correspondence has been received from Scott Mullen representing the Lake Rosso North Association, and that's in the addendum package. Yes, we've all received that in the addendum. And I would like to ask Jamie Robinson um, to speak to this application as our planning person on the staff. Certainly, thank you, Your Worship. And this is an application for a consent and zoning bylaw amendment. Um, no staff have no changes to the recommendations as it relates to the consent application as it relates to which is to approve the application or provisionally approve it subject to the conditions noted in the report as it relates to the zoning bylaw amendment portion of the application uh, based on the comments that are have been received uh, we do think it would be appropriate that council consider deferral of the zoning bylaw amendment application so that um, staff could take a, a good hard look at the uses that are proposed through the rural, uh, rural zone and potentially consider refinement to those uses. So the re recommendation would be that, uh, that, uh, that the consent application could be approved this evening if you wish. And with the zoning application, uh, zoning bylaw amendment application be uh, deferred so that those uses permitted through the rural zone could be refined, uh, refined slightly, and it could be brought back to a subsequent meeting. So with that, uh, Your Worship, if there's any questions of council, I'd be happy to do my best to answer those. And uh, the applicant may also have some comments to make. Um, I see Ms. Kramer has her hand up, so I'll ask you to speak to um, Mr. Robinson's comments. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Can everybody hear me all right? All right, thanks. My name is Helena Kramer and I'm with Marie Poiré Planning and Associates, authorized agent to act on behalf of the property owners, Les and, and Sue Smith. And I can speak to um, the lot addition. I'm not sure if everybody has reviewed the, the sketch just yet or, oh, and also thank you for allowing me to speak. It was a last minute registration. Um, would it be all right if I had permission to share my screen? Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Okay, thank you. So this is the sketch for the, the lot addition. Now the subject lands that are to be severed are, is this property here and it's, it's a little bit of a funny shape there. But the lot addition itself is actually this rural back lot. And so I'm not sure that the um, gentleman pr that provided the comments understood that this was actually like a rural back lot portion of the property. It actually has nothing to do with the shoreline. And if I can share the zoning or the, I'm sorry, the, where did it go? Yeah, so the zoning of the subject property is actually SR1-79. And if the lot addition were to be a without the rezoning application, it would leave the resulting benefiting proper property with all of this, like the split zoned land, which doesn't make good planning sense. So the resulting configuration for zoning would be primarily, would, it would be rural for the benefiting property and the resulting retained property would remain shoreline residential dash seven nine. So that is the application in a nutshell and I can't, there we go, okay. So on the West Perry Sound geography network mapping, you can see that the portion that's going to be added 
to this section is not functionally related to the shoreline at all. So that's one thing I wanted to point out and I would hope that that would alleviate council's concern in that regard. So thank you and I am available to answer any questions about this needed. Okay, thank you. So council, we have a, a recommendation that um, we could consider the bylaw amendment application today, but defer the zoning bylaw until the uh, uses are uh, more clearly defined as requested in the letter from the Lake Rosso North Association. Um, I'm gonna ask everyone on the call or on, on this meeting to mute your microphones if you're not speaking because we're getting a lot of background noise. Um, does anyone have, does council have any questions of either uh, Mr. Robinson or Ms. Kramer? Vincent, do you have a question? Councilor Vincent, go ahead. Um, my question is, and I think I've had this answered, but I'll ask it again. My question is, um, is the 10 Billy Point already rural? Yes, so they, the piece that's being joined would just become, instead of shoreline residential, would become rural. It would become what, the 10 Billy Point. So 10 Billy Point, the one that's on the water is not changing. It's already rural. That's okay, that was just, okay, that's what I understood. So that's all I wanted to know. That's good, thank you. Sorry, Councillor Felder. Councillor Felder, we need you to unmute. Oh, my, for some reason, my computer won't work, and I'm attending the meeting on my phone. It's, it's uh, pretty small. Okay, we can hear you. My question is for either one. It doesn't matter. But I'm looking at the zoning map, and I see, uh, I see the little piece that uh, they want to add is SR1, but then I also see on the on the larger piece that it carries an, is, is there EP zoning currently on that piece? If I, if I could answer, Madam Chair. Go ahead, yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Whatever. Yes, there, there is some EP zone on the, the benefiting property as well, but the lot line does not bisect that EP zone in, in any way. So when we pre-consulted with town staff back in June and they, just because the lot line wasn't proposed to intersect that EP zone, it was deemed not to require any environmental studies or supporting studies in that regard. Yeah, but I mean, that EP zone to remain, correct? That yes, would remain. that's correct. Okay, and then, and then above the EP zone, there's an, an SR1, small SR, pocket of SR1, is that correct? Yes, yeah, so, so the retained property is proposed to remain SR1. Okay, um, I see the SR1 on the, on the retained. So you're, you're cutting the little wedge off and you're asking, you're, you're adding it to the large piece, correct? And on that large piece, it looks to me right now that it's carrying three different zoning prior to adding the, the additional piece from our zoning bylaw. Now, I, I don't see the boundaries of the property on the zoning bylaw, so maybe I'm mistaken, but it looks like there's some, some rural, some SR1 and some EP. Is that that's correct? Co that's correct. So the application is seeking to just make the, the benefiting property all one zone, which would be rural, just to avoid any split zoning issues. So everything that's, everything that's SR1 would become rural. Everything that's EP would remain EP? Correct. Okay, thank you. Councillor Osborne. Councillor Osborne, you're muted. Boom sucked. Yeah. Now, hello? 
Yeah, we can, we, you are breaking up, Councillor Osborne, significantly. Yeah, I know. So. Okay. Go ahead, you can try your it, question. You say that the, sorry? Okay, Councillor Osborne, we're unable to distinguish what you're saying, so I'm going to suggest that you call into the um, meeting by telephone because we are not we we are able to hear everyone else, but not yourself. So could you please call in by telephone? Your Worship, maybe if just, well, I could offer a point of clarification while Mr. O by sure. Councillor Osborne calls in. Um, staff is obviously supportive of the uh, the minor boundary adjustment, which is proposed here. Uh, they're supportive in principle of the zoning amendment as well um, to, to zone these lands to rural. However, there's been some question about the exhaustive list of permitted uses that's provided from the standard rural zoning. For example, a kennel is a permitted use as of right in the rural in the rural zone. So the reason for the staff to request uh, deferral of the zoning piece is so that we can take a good hard look at those uses in the rural zone and which ones are compatible or may not be compatible with that those adjacent shoreline uses and come back with that revised bylaw to a subsequent council meeting. In terms of timing and process, there really is no impact on the processing. What's being proposed with the consent here is provisional consent. There's a number of conditions that need to be satisfied as part of that. So it's really just pressing pause on the zoning application for, uh, for a month. And I would suspect it would come back in a month's time and approval would be granted most likely. I obviously can't speak for council, but the, certainly would have a favorable staff report at that time for those revised uses. So it is a, is a fairly simple application here. Thank you very much for the clarification. Councillor Finson. I just wanted to ask what portion of the Bealey Point, the 10 Bealey Point Road is uh, shoreline residential? And what portion of it is rural? I, I, I assumed it was all rural. That's what you said, that's what I asked. But now I'm understanding there's some shoreline residential in the 10 Bealey Point piece. Go ahead, Ms. Kramer. Yes, that's correct. And I'll, I'll share my screen again, just to show the, the zoning map here. Where did it go? Can everybody see that? Okay. So the benefiting property, and it's difficult that the zoning lines don't match up, but the benefiting property is actually all of this around here. So there is a portion that's zoned to shoreline residential, although it's it, it doesn't match with the like the rural zoning that's associated with the rest of, of the property. So that's what we would be seeking further to make to make rural. And I, I would say that that's an appropriate um, deferral if council deems it necessary to to specify the, the uses permitted on on this little section here that we're proposing to rezone. Well, that's actually you're proposing to rezone that in the top section. So not just that little piece. That was my that's, understanding. That's correct. But that's not what it is. So so it's a lot more involved because it's waterfront involved in making it rural. So I understand because uh, I explained this to somebody, but I obviously I didn't have the right information. So I think that we should defer the zoning as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Fenson. Councillor Felder. Yeah, th thank you, Mayor. I mean, I, I think really if we're going to defer this, I'd like to see an analysis done uh, between, I mean, it, the rezoning could go either way. I mean, you could rezone all of it to rural, in my opinion, or you could rezone all of it to SR1 um, if, if the goal is to make a consistent uh, a piece of property, a new piece of property with a consistent zoning. So I, I would like to see the analysis between instead of taking a rural zone and restricting some of the uses, perhaps as SR1 zone is the proper to Councillor Vincent's point, perhaps that's the more appropriate zoning. 
Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I, I'm hearing that uh, council would like to um, accept Mr. Robinson's recommendation to defer the decision until we can come back or the staff can come back with more specific uses. And I think you hear some question about whether the ending zoning should be rural or shoreline residential. So if that can be addressed as you come back, that would be useful. Certainly. Sure, if, Madam Chair, could I ask just one question? Um, will you be making a decision on the consent portion of the application tonight? I ask the clerk to speak to that. Mr. Robinson had recommended that council could make a decision on the consent and uh, defer the rezoning. So when council comes out of the public meeting, there will be motions on those two items. And then also Rod Osborne. Join the meeting. Do you have a question, Councillor Osborne? Can you hear me? Yes. I, I can't see anybody and I'm getting an epic. You know, I, I, I think I'm gonna... This is crazy. I think we have you on a telephone, Councillor Osborne, instead of... I am on a telephone, Mayor. I am on a phone. I cannot see anything. I can't... Uh, all I can do is talk, right? I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, I guess my question was to whoever it is presenting, because I don't have a screen, was how can you have rural zoning on a property that's on waterfront? Um, Ms. Kramer, do you want to answer that? Sure, through, through you, Madam Mayor. Um, so the, the waterfront portion of that benefiting property is actually zoned environmental protection, which is associated with the wetland area there. So the shoreline portion of the property isn't actually zoned shoreline residential, it's zoned um, environmental okay. protection. All right, one other question. What is the purpose of this change of uh, designation and zoning change? What, what is the end purpose by the applicant here or the intention down going forward? So I can better understand what, what's trying to happen here. So through, through you, Madam Chair, um, the, the purpose of the rezoning is just to avoid the, the subject, like the resulting benefiting property from being split zone. So when there's more than one zone associated with a property, it, it confuses the uses and the required uh, provisions like setbacks and whatnot on, on the subject property. So in order to remove those ambiguities, we, it was actually requested by township staff at the time we pre-consulted with them to address that by way of a zoning amendment application. So this, this change, all these changes have been initiated by staff, not by the applicant? Yeah, so, so when we pre-consulted with township staff, they, they asked about the resulting zoning of that property and we advised that we could concurrently submit as like a rezoning application for the benefiting property to address that potential issue of split zoning. Okay, and one one last question for me. Uh, is there an intent to sell per, uh, per a portion of this property in the future? Is, is that so, part of the equation? So the two properties, the proposed severed property and the proposed benefiting property. And I say severed because that's the portion that's having a lot addition added. There's no lots proposed to be created or anything, but the benefiting property and the severed property are both owned by, by the same family. And they are considering potentially selling the Ross Moyne Road property in the future. And before they do that, they wanna ensure that the lot lines are configured to, to their liking before, before selling. That's not on the, on the horizon at this time, but that's just to get the ducks in a row. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. It was just more for clarification, just as uh, um, Craig was speaking about what we were going to do coming out of the public meeting, there was a bit of feedback. So I just wanted to, if Craig, if you wouldn't mind, just indulge everyone just to get clarification as to next steps here. That was all, Mayor. 
Council will adjourn the public meeting and reconvene the regular meeting, and then there will be motions on the floor, uh, one for the consent and one for the rezoning, at which time Council decide whether to ask to feed or defer. Thank you for the clarification. Thank you. I see no further questions. Uh, Council will now close the public meeting and reconvene the regular meeting. I have a motion that the public meeting held for the following matters is hereby closed and the regular meeting is hereby reconvened for the Zoning Bylaw Amendment Application R 2021-0009-H for Mayor and Penny and Zoning Bylaw Amendment Application Number R 2021-0010-H and Consent Application B 2021-0015-H for Ferncliff. Could I have a motion from Councillor Finson? I so move. And seconded by Councillor Moffat. I'll second that motion, Mayor. All in favor of moving out of the public meeting? Mayor, sorry, you may want to ensure we have Councillor Collins and Councillor Osborne since they're on the telephone. I will, thank you. I have a motion that bylaw number 2021-076 being a bylaw to amend Township of Seguin zoning bylaw number 2006-125, property role 4903-010-002, Dash two five nine zero zero R two thousand and twenty one dash zero 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 nine dash H Mayor and Penny, <coughs> excuse me, at seventy three Morgan Bay Road is hereby deemed to have been read a first, second, and third time and passed by council. Could I have a motion from uh, Councillor uh, Cole? I will so move, Mayor. And seconded by Councillor Osborne. Second, Mayor, you hear me? Yep, thank you. <coughs> All in favor? Yay. Uh, Councillor Collins, are you in favor? Yes, uh, is this uh, the Mayor Penny? I have no issues approving the proposed bylaw amendment application. Mayor, thank that's, you. That's correct, yep. And Councillor Osborne, you voted? I voted yay, Mayor. Yep. Yep, thank you. I have a motion that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Seguin does hereby grant provisional approval to consent application number B 2021-0015-H for Ferncliff development subject to the conditions set out in the decision. And I have a motion from Councillor Fellner. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And seconded by Councillor Collins. I'll second the motion. All in favor. And Councillor Collins, where do you vote on this one? The provisional approval of the consent. Uh yes, uh, I agree on the consent, but I agree with Jamie's recommendation to defer. Okay, that's, that's the one we're talking about. That's the next motion. That's the oh, next okay, one. go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> So I have a motion that bylaw number 2021-077 being a bylaw to amend the Township of Seguin zoning bylaw number 2006-125, property roll number 4903-010-003-00100 for R 2021-0010-H. Ferncliff at 25 Ross Point Road, 4903-010-003-00110 for R 2021-0010-H for Ferncliff at 10 Bailey Point Road is hereby deemed to have been read a first, second, and third time. So could I have a motion from Councillor Finson? move this and then we'll we have the choice of I so move okay, thank you and seconded by Councillor Moffat I'll second that motion mayor 
So I'll ask for all those in favor of referring. Okay. Could I have a motion to defer it? Vincent, will you move to defer this? I so move. Okay. Um, and now we'll call a vote on deferral. Um, the seconder. Seconder. Hang on, I need to record this. Could I have a seconder to defer? I'll second it, Mayor. Okay, Councillor Collins. Okay. Yes, yes, uh, I uh, I vote to uh, agree with Jamie's recommendation to defer. Okay, all in favor of deferring this portion of the zoning change so we can have more explicit uses. Okay, and we heard from Councillor Collins. Councillor Osborne, do you have a vote? Yay. To defer? Yes. Okay, so deferral is carried and we will look forward to hearing back from you. Council will now consider the following road allowance application. Your road allowance application number RAS 2019-0014-H for Kaminsky at Turtle Lake, bylaw number 2021-067 and concession road allowance application RAC 2020-0023-R for Ward, bylaw number 2021-069. Anyone registered to speak to these applications? Who has registered to speak to these applications? Uh, have there been any written objections received related to these applications? No written objections have been received. Um, Lauren, would you like to speak to either one or both? Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, for the Shorber Allowance application, Kaminsky. Um, the owner at 323 Turtle Lake Road is looking to purchase their shore allowance of buying their property on Turtle Lake. Um, with respect to the concession road allowance application uh, for Ward, uh, this is an application to purchase concession road allowance adjacent to the subject lands at 16 Grand Street in Rosso. Uh, there is an existing shed and driveway encroaching over a portion of the concession road allowance. Uh, the concession for allowance does not provide access to water. We had requested um, that the Minister of Transportation provide comments given the proximity to Highway 141, and they were responded saying that they have no concerns. Uh, for the ward concession for allowance, there's also a deeming bylaw application associated, uh, which will allow the concession for allowance to merge with the subject lands. And I'm Thank here. you very much. Yeah. Councillor Moffat has a question. Thank you, Mayor. Just when uh, the existing shed that exists at 16 Grand Street that is encroaching, is there a building permit or something required that you're aware of, or is it under the 108 uh, square meters, I guess? Through your worship, Councillor Moffat, um, there is nothing in the, the building permit file. It is a small shed. Um, the structures are quite old on that property as well. I believe the house was built in 1970s. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you. Osborne. Uh, yes, Mayor. Anyone else having a problem listening to, I believe it was Lauren? I couldn't make out what she was saying at all on either application. I apologize, but I do believe it is your connection because we are having no other issues. I'm on my phone now, Mayor, and I can hear you just fine. I just couldn't hear Lauren. It was all garbage. Um, I think both Shore Road Allowance Act are straightforward, and one is the concession road allowance that has an, uh, an existing driveway on it. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Um, Oh, I have a motion that bylaw number 2021-067, being a bylaw to close, stop up and sell a portion of the original shore road allowance 
application number RAS 2019-0014-H for Kaminsky is hereby deemed to have been read a first, second, and third time and passed by council. Could I have a motion from uh, Councillor Fellner? So moved, Mayor. And seconded by Councillor Finson. I second that. All in favor. Hey, Councillor Collins, you vote. Um, yes, I approve. Okay. Thank you. I have a motion that bylaw number 2021-069 being a bylaw to close, stock up, and sell a portion of the original concession road allowance application number RAF 2020-0023-R for Ward is hereby deemed to have been read a first, second, and third time and passed by council. Could I have a motion from Councillor Osborne? So moved, Mayor. Thank you. And um, seconded by Councillor Moffat. I'll second that motion, Mayor. All in favor. Councillor Collins, how do you vote? Yay. Thank you. And I have a motion that bylaw number 2021-073, being a bylaw to deem part lot 11, and S of Perry Sound Road and part of Queen Street on Plan 163 pursuant to Section 50 Bracket 4 of the Planning Act not to be on a plan of subdivision, property owner Joseph and Nancy Ward, property roll number 4903-020-001, file number D, 2020-0014-R is hereby deemed to have been read a first, second, and third time and passed by council. Could I have a motion from Councillor Cole? I will so move. Thank you. And seconded by Councillor Osborne. Second, Mayor. Thank you. All in favor. Thank you and Councillor Collins. Yay. motion that Council of the Corporation of the Township of Seguin does hereby receive the staff reports as presented on the agenda for October 4th, 2021 meeting of Council. And this applies to the development and protective services, um, particularly that we deferred from the last meeting. So could I have a motion from um, Councillor Fellner? Uh, so, so moved, Mayor. And seconded by Councillor Collins. I'll second the motion. All in favor of receiving the staff report. Thank you and Councillor Collins. Okay. And I will call on Chief Hood to speak to this. This is the same report you received at the last meeting. Sorry, I was talking to uh, no one, uh, my mistake. Uh, a couple of clarification points on the report. Um, I indicated on page three about occurrences and the occurrences I had broken down to actually occurrences by the nine to five bylaw officer and then separately showing the occurrences by the on-call officers. So that, for example, the first paragraph, there was 24 occurrences investigated, but there was an additional 10 for the evening and weekend calls, which totals of 34. Um, there was a question too regarding the administrative monetary penalties as an alternative to POA. Uh, what I have discovered so far is the 
municipalities that are using that are large city departments and uh, or large city uh, municipal departments where you have, for example, Peel issues over 200,000 parking tickets a year. Well, that's pretty significant if you've got a $40, $50 parking ticket and you're collecting all the money versus uh, a limited amount from if it went to POA. So at this time, there's still a bit more research to do, but it appears that the amount of charges that we have, the amount of tickets we issue, we would be further ahead uh, from a cost perspective, revenue-wise, to stay with POA, um, but I haven't. We haven't made a final decision on that. Um, so I, I believe those were a couple of questions that came up um, that I was asked to clarify. Does council have any further questions? The report. Yes, Mayor. Uh, I'm trying to find my hand here. Hang on. Okay, Councillor Osborne, go ahead. There it is. So to you, Mayor, to, to Don. Uh, you mentioned that uh, August was very busy with 15 occurrences in open files with tree cutting fill waste, dumping illegal trailers. It's quite a, a variety of offenses. Um, speaking with another councillor, we thought it might be helpful to advocate for some sort of monthly or quarterly reporting on what these occurrences are specifically, where, what boards they're, where they're located, what what the offense is, is the violation. Because when we have in our respective wards a ratepayer complain about an issue and brings it to our attention. Uh, we do so, I think, for the most part. And then sometime later, that same rate payer will get back to us asking, what's the disposition? What has happened? And as counselors, it would be nice to have an answer as to the progress of that file, where it stands, where, where we're at, in it, whether um, it's being remedied or whether it's going legal, um, so that we have are in a position to have some intelligence to those ratepayers as to where the case and our wards are going. So uh, uh, some sort of a spreadsheet indicating on, you know, on a rolling monthly basis, giving the disposition of those occurrences, I think would be helpful to all. Uh, can I have your comments on that, Don? Uh, yes, Councillor Osborne. The only concern that we would have in a case under investigation that's being investigated would not be information given out to the neighbor asking what happened to my neighbor when I complained. So I think we would have to be, I agree to give you an update, but to actually go beyond the update on the progress uh, would be something that we, we do not give out that information. Well, I understand, uh, Don, the, the confidentiality and, and we're, we're sworn by that in, in several cases. Although for information of counselors, it would be nice to know where a file stands. And uh, I, I know of some that have been going on for a few years. And I think we as counselors need to know that A, the files are being followed up, and, and B, that, that there's enough staff and bylaw to handle them and, and not get behind the eight ball on them. So I think even from an internal confidential point of view, it would be helpful to counselors to know how our bylaw is executed. Okay, I, I think that's a suggestion, um, and I'm going to ask our CAO to speak to that, but I think we can take that comment under advisement. Thank you. Your Worship, and uh, as we noted, Councillor Osborne, I, I suggest that uh, part of our current uh, information technology review will look at how we collect data and how we report out. Uh, that work is underway at this time, so stay tuned, and, and we'll report back with some updates. Thank you. Professor Moffat, you have a question? Well, it, it basically it was answered by Jason. I was, you know, um, I'll wait to hear, I'll wait to see what sort of form of uh, reporting comes out 
because I think that's really what we're looking for. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, this is this was a pilot project, and it's good to see the report. So thank you very much, Chief Hood. Um, we're going to move into council reports. I forget from one week to the next. Next, who goes first? So I'm going to count on Councillor Finson, Ward 6 first. I had a couple of meetings, a museum meeting, which was, it went very well. And we have a new board member named Bert, who is very exciting. He, it, it, it's really exciting news. He's an artist. He's amazing. I'm really excited to have him on the He's board. Reeve of, Reeve of Archipelago. Yes, I, I'm, I'm just over the moon. I'm excited that he's on there and it's going to be really good for the museum. I'm going to start volunteering when I get home at the museum. Uh, we had a cemetery meeting as well, which went very well as usual. And uh, we did discuss, um, uh, we did discuss once again, the, um, the problems that uh, Jason had brought up and there was still no conclusion. Nobody had gone out there because of the 518 and the troubles there. So nobody's gone out and everybody just seemed to believe that there was nothing that the township could do with regards to the um, colonization road. And that's about it. I've had a few phone calls. I had some inquiries about some properties, which I've answered the inquiries, apparently not very well because they're still inquiring. So, so, uh, uh, and I, had, I have had a few questions and I've had them all answered very well by staff. So that's all I have to report. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Collins. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I've had no uh, committee meetings uh, to report. Uh, we do have a DSAT meeting coming up on the 14th, finally, uh, October 14th. Uh, other than that, I've received numerous calls uh, on uh, Highway 518 and their road project. And even though that's a municipal highway, there's a lot of people that uh, commute from uh, Ward 5 into Perry Sound and Rosso and so on. And uh, they were just questioning what is going on. Other than that, uh, I've had calls uh, pertaining to um, uh, roads again and internet. That's all I have to report. Thank you. I think. I think everybody's getting calls on 518 in terms of the slowness of Fowler's work. I know they had a lot of rain, but we're all getting calls. So I sympathize, Councillor Collins. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Councillor Fowler, you're next. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, since the last meeting, um, I haven't had any uh, committee meetings. Um, I've had some inquiries on high speed internet, uh, one just recently, which I tried to answer, but I'm not sure that I knew the answer. Um, as well, uh, you know, lots of uh, lots of rain. Uh, it's 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 somewhat slowed down the, the progress. Uh, on the uh, park to park project a little bit, although we did get one significant, uh, the, the boys did get one significant section completed in the last week and a half or so, just an horrible, uh, badly flooded portion of the trail. So it's uh, nice and high and dry now. Um, and that's, uh, that's all I have to report. Thank you very much. And Councillor Osborne. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um... I have a meeting upcoming, with, I believe the 28th uh, EMS meeting, our first one for two or three months now. And uh, I had a meeting last Monday with yourself and the CAO and some Three Lakes rate payer over uh, bone launch issues for the Three Lakes, which was quite productive. Uh, other than that, that's all I have to report. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Cole. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, a number of meetings again. Uh, on September 22nd, our Belvedere Board of Management met again and uh, reviewed our um, audit for last year, among other things, and uh, the report from the Finance Committee. On uh, the 28th of September, we had an all 
municipality, but I didn't see anybody from Seguin there except myself meeting with uh, the, a presentation from uh, our architects for the Belvedere or for the new campus of care master plan. Now, please let me know if you did not get the invitation because it went out from the hospital from the West Prairie Sound Health Center. And they assured us it was going to all municipal. It did not. Okay, that's good to hear. Well, it's not good to hear. It's sad to hear because it was a really it. good. It was a really good They're presentation. Insane. So maybe huh. I will, if it's okay with you, maybe I'll arrange one just for our council because it's a really good presentation. It's a 3D like sc screen share thing. So we can add it to one of our meetings. I, I wonder if that had happened that we had, that you didn't get the invitation. So, because no one showed up. It went from the hospital from the West Price on Health Center. So anyway, I'll, I'll make sure that gets rectified and we'll do one just for this council. Um, on the 29th, we had uh, a, a long-term care, our ad hoc committee, the one that I chair, and uh, I guess we're moving along pretty rapidly, actually, in, in so many respects. We're still waiting to hear back from the ministry on a number of issues, but we did, out of that meeting came the uh, final solidification of a communication plan, of which what we did a few nights before was supposed to be part of it, but obviously it's flawed, so <laughs> we'll, we'll get that looked after. We were supposed to have had a Rose Point Trail meeting this week and that got canceled at the last minute. Very frustrating when you don't know it's being canceled and all of a sudden a meeting that you, I tried to get into the meeting for half hour, couldn't understand why I couldn't get in. And then I look back at my emails and I see an hour before it had been canceled. So it's like, <laughs> very frustrating. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, and on the fourth today, today in fact, uh, the chair and I uh, from Belvedere signed a, a two-year contract with West Prairie Sound Health Center, which they are now managing Belvedere on our behalf. They have supplied our current administrator is is an employee of, of the West Prairie Sound Health Center, and uh, she's absolutely top-notch. And uh, this has this because of this arrangement, we have been able to save money, and which is why we were able to reduce the Belvedere. Uh, the municipal contribution to Belvedere this last year. So uh, it, it's a good thing going forward and it puts us in a position when we rebuild Belvedere that everything will be lining up. This is just some of the steps we're taking to get there. So we signed the document today, it's for two years. So hopefully by the end of the two years, the whole thing has changed, so that's it. Thank you. I would love to see the architectural presentation. So. We, we, I will arrange that because I it, honestly, it's a really, really good presentation. So, okay, great. Thank you, Mayor. On uh, September 23rd, uh, the Globe and Mail, I attended a webinar called Climate Adaption Preparing for Weather Extremes. And I've shared that with uh, Jason, but I don't have the link yet. It was a really good. Um, presentation on uh, from industry experts in the insurance, mainly insurance, but also some planners and stuff, sort of walking through where we may be headed. So when I get the information I'm going to share with Jason, I'm sure some staff members would be interested in listening to some of it. The biggest cause of that is water. Hence, what we've talked about today. Um, on the 28th and 30th of September, I've been attending several informal meetings for the Muskoka Watershed Council on governance and financial matters in my capacity as treasurer and board member. I did miss a working group meeting last Thursday, um, but uh, there was just too many things going on. However, uh, sorry, last Friday, my mistake last Friday. However, on the 29th, we had our large, um, basically all, all hands on deck, um, integrated community energy and climate action plans meeting that um, uh, was attended by, I'm gonna say there was around 20 or so, uh, including uh, representatives from the various municipalities. And I'm, I'm pleased to report that McDougal is now a member of ICECAP, still working on uh, Whitestone. Uh, so we're, we're collecting that. Um, that last piece of the regional and uh, we had a good round table discussion uh, with uh, everyone in attendance and I'm uh, speaking I've spoken to Jason about um, getting him uh, brought up to speed on that and look to have uh, an audience with the CAOs before Christmas 
um, to bring the balance of the municipality CAO is up to speed because there's, I think there's a bit of a disconnect. There's staff and council representatives, but I think we need to fill in the in the gap with the with the CAOs as well. So, a um, few few emails from residents, but it's been pretty quiet. Um, maybe people are hiding under their umbrella and not on their computer. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I don't have a whole lot to report, but September. September 23rd, I spent a couple hours with grades four to seven at Humphrey Public School uh, talking about what it's like to be a mayor and an elected official, and they, they pre-sent me their, most of their questions, not all of their questions, and I was intrigued by the very first question on the typed list. How long does it take to get a building permit? So I suspect that maybe, maybe they consulted with parents um, prior to making their list, but it was, it was fun. Um, the 24th, I attended the 60th anniversary of the CNIB Lake Joe camp um, and the dedication of their new artificial turf soccer pitch and mini golf, and it was fascinating. It was, it was a very rainy day, but um, this whole artificial turf has been donated to the CNIB by the artificial turf builders uh, of North America, and it's pretty pretty impressive. Um, for instance, when you step out of bounds, it sounds differently and feels differently on your feet so that someone who has sight loss knows when they're playing soccer that they're out of bounds just by what the ground feels like. Um, and the ball obviously has noise in it so they can follow the ball with the noise. And I said, why don't the golf balls have noise in the mini putt? Oh, are you nuts? The noise is in the hole, not in the ball. So I learned, I learned all kinds of things that afternoon. Um, that evening, Councillor Felder and I attended the Business Excellence Award aboard, aboard the Island Queen, again in the rain. Um, so it was interesting to meet some of the leading business people um, of our area, and they were, it was a lovely evening. The 27th, um, as Councillor Osborne has said, Jason and Councillor Osborne and I met with some of the executives of Tri Lakes um, to discuss the boat ramp, and there's lots of investigation going on. On the 28th, we had an airport operations and a commission meeting. And on the 29th, Jason and I met with um, the SMART community to try and understand some of the upcoming provincial funding for broadband. To say the least, it's confusing and we're still digging. Um, and then on the 30th, which was um, uh, last Thursday, uh, was Orange Shirt Day, and I walked in the Perry Sound Walk um, in the evening. It was well attended, but um, there weren't a lot of politicians there. A lot of people from the first time, I was disappointed overall to not see more people. And that's my report. So I have a motion that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Seguin does hereby receive the board and committee agendas and minutes and the correspondence as presented on the agenda for October 4th, 2021 meeting of Council. Can I have a motion from Councillor uh, Moffat? I so move that motion, Mayor. Seconded by Councillor Coles. I will second that motion. All in favor. Thank you, Councillor Collins. You're okay with that? Aye. Okay. And I have a motion that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Seguin does hereby proceed to a closed meeting at 5.43 p.m. In order to address matters pertaining to personal matters about identifiable individuals, including municipal or local board employees and labor relations or employee negotiations. I have a motion um, from Councillor Osborne. So moved, Mayor. And seconded by Councillor Felder. I'll second that, Mayor. All in favor of moving into close. Yay. That's okay with you, Councillor Collins. 